I am working with reverse osmosis to make maple syrup. From high school, you'll have heard about osmosis, where you can get pure water into a cell from a sugar solution. However, we're trying to reverse this. We're going to squeeze this cell, push the water out of the membrane, and leave the sugar behind. We're trying to concentrate maple sap, which is, in effect, this stuff, to maple syrup, which you would buy at the supermarket. And the reason we want to do that is we're going from 2% sugar to 66% sugar. And we do that by use of a membrane. This membrane here will allow the water to pass through, but not the sugar. This way, we get the concentration. So the energy required to boil off this water in the sap, which is the traditional method, is significantly more, think 100 times, than it is to run the setup, because all we need is the electricity for the pump. So far with my results, I have been able to concentrate sugar from the 2% that you get initially up to about the 20% solution which we have here. We cannot take it any higher because of limitations of the equipment. However, these limitations are significantly less than what we originally thought, and therefore the overall project is a success for industry, as they can take these results and apply it to their commercial plants. So Christchurch has all these biofilters that treat odours coming from the wastewater network. These biofilters has packing media and currently we use bark as the media, but unfortunately they're unavailable in sufficient quantities. I'm looking at replacing the bark media with wood chip media and these will have different chemical and physical properties which I will be researching. In a biofilter, um, hydrogen sulphide is produced by the wastewater treatment. So the biofilter pH declines over time due to the production of hydrogen sulphide by the wastewater treatment. So the life expectancy of bark and wood chip decreases at a lower pH level. What I'm doing here is I have these bark and wood chip samples in low pH solutions and I'm measuring their change in pH over time. So I'm expecting that wood will not change pH as much as bark will. So this means that wood will stay at a higher pH than bark. I'm looking at modelling the mixing and coating of controlled release fertilisers and in this mixer here so it can be scaled up to an industrial size. So I guess the problem with this is that obviously you're dealing with uh, individual particles throughout the system and so you're looking at trying to simulate each individual particle. And so we're doing this by dividing the whole system into a number of blocks and then we're going to monitor the particle interactions in each of these blocks and then put it all together at the end and see how it works. As part of my work I've done a video of the simulation here and we're just comparing it to what we'd, we'd actually see in the mixer. So we're doing this because we want to control the release of the nutrients from the fertiliser and ensure that it goes all the way to the plant. We want to ensure that it's not being lost to the environment and having detrimental effects. I'm designing and building an apparatus that will measure the viscosity of New Zealand steel slag at ultra high temperatures here using this machine. Uh, at the moment New Zealand steel slag is a waste material but it has the high value component titanium in it so by measuring the viscosity and understanding some of the properties of slag we might be able to build a cell that can pull titanium out as a valuable product. We haven't been able to run the high temperature model, but we have successfully been constructing a cold temperature apparatus, so we are able to calibrate a machine and ultimately prove that we can do these experiments. From here, we'll do several high temperature experiments to characterise the viscosity of New Zealand steel slag and a few synthetic compositions to get a full understanding of how composition affects the viscosity. So I am measuring the conductivity of metal slag this is the room temperature experiment before I go into the high temperature furnace. So I'm using a four electrode method to measure the conductivity. So we'll be doing this measurement at room temperature and then we will be replicating it in the high temperature furnace at 1600 degrees. Once we've got these measurements, we can then create a high temperature electrolytic cell which will extract the titanium from the metal slag, um, which is a high value product. So my project here is to investigate the properties and the behaviours of titanium slag at high temperature. And this assembly here basically is to investigate what happens to the slag at those temperatures. So I've got a sample of the slag here which I'll be melting at 1500 degrees to check what properties it exhibits at those temperatures. So this apparatus here is called a horizontal tube furnace. Currently it's just an assembly scale model. 
but what I intend to do is stick it into a furnace where this middle section here is in a heated element which heats the sample to 1500 degrees and then once it's reached that temperature I will push it up and quench it which essentially freezes the sample. So with this experiment I'm hoping to investigate the properties of the slag such as the melting point and the composition and what happens to it at those temperatures and then once I freeze and lock it I hope to be able to investigate it via microscopy or spectrometry. So once we have all of the results from our three experiments we'll be able to characterise all of the properties of New Zealand steel slag and a few synthetic compositions which ultimately will help us model the properties of the slag and build an electrolytic cell to extract titanium. So this project's aim is to reduce the level of CO2 in the atmosphere or find a use for CO2 produced by processes. So the goal is to use thermocatalysis to generate liquid fuels from CO2 and hydrogen. So the main product we're aiming for here is methanol uh, as a product, but any sort of ethanol or higher hydrocarbons would be a useful fuel as a product from this reaction.